It's time to enter the drone zone with me, James Drone, aka Pure Ambient Drone. So hit that subscribe button, tap that bell, and get ready to synth on. Hey there, synth drones. We are back with episode number 84, Midnight Synthesizer Talk. And with me today is my good buddy, Rick Marston. Rick Marston, how you doing, buddy? Wave at the camera. Good. How are you doing today? <laughs> Love you. Uh, Rick and I are trying Hi, a, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm talking at the same time you are, uh -huh. but uh, Rick and I are trying a camera trick here uh, where we can probably film one another and so that you can see our uh, beautiful faces or ugly faces, however you want to look at it, right? Yeah. <laughs> everybody is unique and everybody's cool in every way. So everybody is No so one is ugly, awesome. baby. You're, if you play synthesizers or if you're into electronic gear, you are beautiful. Period. Yeah, thank thank Period. goodness all synthesizers aren't all the same, right? Uh, I'm in. And everybody is different, so everybody's got their own flavor flav. Yeah. Uh so Rick, I wouldn't mind talking about the Jupiter X. I just acquired one. Awesome. And I know that you had the uh Jupiter XM, the, the yeah. smaller brother sister of this synthesizer. That's correct. I'll let you start out because you had it longer than I've had mine so far. And you had a different version. So what are your thoughts on the Jupiter XM slash X? Well, to be honest, the Jupiter X is one of those type of synthesizers that is good to be controlled from another synthesizer because the mini keys are a hit and miss for some people. You either love the mini keys or you hate the mini, mini keys. So I was kind of having a little bit of an issue with playing it from uh, the actual synth itself. I just didn't want to play on the mini keys. Uh, for some reason, it was different on the Minilog XD because I guess you're just programmed to play on the mini keys. But with the Jupiter XM, the sound was good. I still like the ACB technology on the System 8 better um, when it comes to like the Jupiter 8, the Juno 106. So it was just the smaller uh, body just made you feel like I got what I wanted, but I really should have gone all. Yeah, you know, uh, I agree with that because... I went to the music store prior to buying the X mm -hmm. and the local music store has an XM mm -hmm. and they have it out on display mm -hmm. and I gave it a shot and I quickly ran out of room for my fingers. Uh, you just want to put both hands on this amazing synthesizer. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, they do have a, a, a little menu option for remote keyboard. Mm -hmm. And that's really great because then Essentially, you can take any MIDI interface you want mm -hmm. and control the XM. Mm -hmm. and, and they specifically mentioned that in, in some video that was done on the X and XM that uh, they wanted people to be able to actually access the uh, synthesizer because the XM did not have a full-size keyboard. Mm -hmm. So it's good that they included that in there. Yep. What, what, Absolutely. what would you say stands out the most for the XM X line of synthesizers to you? Well, to be honest with you, just being able to have the capability to play a classic vintage roll-in piece of gear like the the Jupiter 8 or the Juno 106. And the different new plug-in for them, two of them, was the uh, JX8P and the MS, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> the SH101. Isn't it funny that we right. work with so much Behringer gear that sometimes that when you're talking about <laughs> another brand, you start bleeding it. So not the MS101, yeah. it is yeah. actually the SH101, the classic analog monosynth. And uh, yeah, that was a, that's a little bit of an oots. <laughs> Yeah, uh, getting you know what uh, I've got the Phantom, uh -huh. and I've got to tell you that they there's some presets, and I mentioned this already in another video. But for those of you out there who haven't uh, seen my other video yet, so the Phantom has thousands of presets, mm -hmm. and some of them say things like Juno on fire. Yeah, uh, it has the Zen core inside the Phantom, and then it has uh, the V piano or something like that. Do the RD eight hundred. Is and it, phenomenal. it it does it, it does not great. have the actual specific synth engines that the uh, X has. Correct, now, correct. With that, with that in mind, uh, I wanted to experience those engines, and I've been thinking about I I've been wanting a JX eight P. Yes, but I I don't want another vintage synthesizer. I've had I have not had great luck with too many vintage synthesizers. Mm -hmm. All right. I've got a I've got a Roland Juno 106 right over my shoulder here. Awesome, which I want. Uh, <laughs> fully re yeah. Fully refurbished. I haven't okay? had a Juno 106 in, in a long time. Condition. <laughs> my but I didn't want another high maintenance synth. I didn't want a uh, lack of controls. I wanted to be able to tweak it. 
and I wanted effects. All right. Oh, yeah. So the uh, Jupiter X absolutely amazes me with the JX8P uh, engine. Mm -hmm. It just totally blew my mind when I started playing the strings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I've never owned a JX8P, but I have certainly researched them. And I got to tell you, they nailed the sound in this engine. It's very convincing. It's awesome. And then you got, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I thought you were saying something. Oh, I did. I it's said it's awesome. Convincing. I said it was awesome. <laughs> it is. It's very convincing. It's very authentic sounding. So then I moved over to the Roland 106, uh, the Juno 106 sound engine. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, it sounds really good. Really good. And and not to mention the other sound engines that are in there. To me, it, it's, it's a worthwhile investment oh, yeah. to buy something of this caliber with this amount of playability. The X has a lot of playability to it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's something yeah. that I've been gassing for since it's come out, since the release. And, of course, the XM was something that was easier for me to obtain financially. So that, I did take I the leap of that. I thought that was the right thing to do. I don't have the XM anymore in my studio because I just felt that if I really want to go gold, let's go gold. Don't go. Well, you, you go owned get the, the real guy. thing. You oh, yeah. actually owned oh, yeah. a Jupiter eight mm -hmm. and you play out. I mean, before all of this stuff was, you know, happened in the world that's mm -hmm. happening. Um, you played out in clubs and places like that. You did live shows. Oh yeah. You need a full size keyboard. Yeah. And when you got a taste of the XM, I know you and I talk on the phone almost uh, every day. Every day we talk on yeah. the phone. And um, you, know, I could tell in your heart you love the XM. You just wanted more. Yeah. More, more, more. I mean, it, once you get a taste of it, you really want the big gun. It's uh, that sounds really naughty, but I'm going to go on. I kind of wanted more. I felt like I was a little short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they left me a little short when you want the big, you know, I do want the big 61 keys. I do want the full size panel. I do want to be able to grab and reach over and, and do something to alter the sounds. Something like a, a yeah. Jupiter eight should be performed with a 61 key. Nothing smaller. <laughs> I say 49 yeah. key. If you're going to redo the boutique Roland in the, in the keyboard format, that's okay to get it out there. But if you're going to do it, there are going to be people who want it and will pay the extra money to have, even an ACB or a Zen core freestanding Jupiter eight clone, which, you know, we all want the analog version, but for right now, you guys are hitting it with the, uh, the Zen core and some of the ACB, if you're still going to be working with that. So think about it. I mean, I'd love to have something like that. I just, yeah, it gives me chills on the body. <laughs> so I want to point something out too, that I have kind of picked up. Mm. Um, if you listen to some of the tracks that are out there done by professionals, especially done in the 80s, mm -hmm. there was a ton of processing done on the keyboards in those days to make them fit in the track. That's right. None of these guys recorded these things uh, dry, or if they did, they added effects later. What I'm saying is they just didn't leave them on the track That's dry. Right. Yeah. They added reverb. They added delays. They added choruses. Mm -hmm. They added whatever it took to get these synthesizers to sound great great inside the track that they were placing them in so they wouldn't stick out like a uh sore sore thumb correct and i i'm picking up on what what uh roland is doing and, and and the reason why i think i'm picking up on it is because i have really been practicing my mixing skills my mastering skills and i've been learning a lot about sound and textures of sound and how things fit in a mix and from from my perspective roland is uh, presenting these uh, presets in the box, if you will, coming out these sounds uh, to be ready made yeah. to to fit into a mix oh, with yeah. with minimum tweaking, maybe a little EQ here and there, mm -hmm. but you got everything in a Jupiter X. You got delay. You even got drive in case you need something to cut through the mix. Oh yeah. Uh, you got reverb. You got chorus. You got a great arsenal coming out of the Jupiter X. And it's all intuitive. The interface is amazing. Now, I, I know you had the XM. Yeah. And and it's hard for you to relate, but the X is just amazing. It's too when you have everything in front of you that you could possibly want for a performance mm -hmm. uh, within fingers uh, tip reach and just reach over and grab what you want. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. It, it, it's a great, fun synthesizer. That's right. 
Well, I do have to say about the XM, there was a little bit more menu diving that I felt that I really wanted to do. Uh, and again, the panel was, they gave you just enough to be able to edit the parameters, what you needed to get. But at the same time, I still wanted more. Again, it, it was, the sound yeah. was great. And uh, the the I arpeggio is either hit or miss again for some people. For me, it was cool just to turn off the beats, <laughs> lock the beats, yeah. you know, and then play along with it and have the I R play with you because it's so much better when you have the beats solid. Because what if you're playing live, you get too excited and you hit too hard on it, the beat goes wonky. But go, you're like, yeah, I you did almost not want need that. But let's try to make this work. That. <laughs> you got yes, yeah. You, you almost need a sequencer or something like that that's quantized. That's exactly uh, or right. just practice. At it because it is very picky about your timing yeah but uh, i see people playing it on videos and they're better at it than i am so it is something that you have to practice and get used to if you're gonna use it's it. not something that you would want to write a whole song with i don't think i no. mean maybe some people would maybe segments that you can snip and put together later on down that's the what line, i'm saying either in logic it, it or really Ableton. is a performance synth but you can use it for the studio if you know what you're doing in the studio already <laughs> there's a lot of power now about the sound, mm -hmm. here's what I think. Okay, so when you're dealing with uh, digital synthesizers, uh, uh, you know, one of the biggest complaints is there's not a, enough warmth there. There's not enough dimensionality. This is true in any digital synthesizer. I've got an Access Virus B. I've had the C. I've had the TI. And that's just the Access Virus synthesizers. Uh, I've had the Core Gradius. I've had the... Um, System 8, and, you know, you had uh, most of all of these <laughs> synthesizers, if not all yeah. of them that I just mentioned. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, you know that digital is always kind of two-dimensional, but uh, aside from the differences between the dimensionality, because you can always fix that in the mix with effects and uh, preamps and things like that. True. Um, I think, this is my opinion, I think that the Roland is one of the best, uh, the, the Roland uh, Phantom, the Zencore, uh, the, the, the synth engines, I think they're one of the best uh, digital synthesizers sound-wise that's out there. And I, I've had the Montage, which I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about the Montage. Mm -hmm. I've had the Korg Kronos. Um, and I've, I've, I've had the, uh, the Phantom, and then I've had, you know, I've got the Phantom. I've, I've had the, uh, what do you call it, the Supernatural synthesizers. I've got JDXI yep. in here. Mm -hmm. And I think that this Zencore that they've come out mm -hmm. with is some of the best sounding digital virtual analog synth stuff mm -hmm. that uh, I've ever heard to my ears. It's some really good convincing stuff. Yes, it is awesome. And it's it very fits cool. great in a mix. And it's it's just, I mean, man, it's really made me rethink my studio as what I really need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with a Phantom and a, and a Jupiter X, you can pull off anything just musically. About. You just could. Absolutely. Yeah. Those two together are a perfect combination together. If you're able to afford both of them, get them both. Mm-hmm. So uh, Rick and I are going to end it right here. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell and go over to Rick's uh, channel as well. Rick Marston official and check out his videos over there. He got he has a ton of demos over there. He's got some really great stuff, especially when you dig into some of his older stuff. He's got some real classics for you guys to see over there. Until next time, I'm James Drone. Keep calm and synth on.